the Comforter in the New Testament. Now, before I begin with my breakdown, I couldn't help but notice some humorous biblical flaws in Jermaine's lesson and decided to point them out right in the open before we continue. And perhaps you will learn how easy you can be deceived when not knowing or checking your Bible. Blasphemy! Got to be blasphemy. A black man can never be holy. Because that's what you're telling me, basically. And a black man can never be spiritual. Holy spiritual. Holy Spirit. Now, what is that all about? First of all, a man is the Holy Spirit. I am the Holy Spirit. I am the comforter that God has sent. You don't understand what that means, but I'm going to give you a good understanding in the Bible. A perfect understanding on what that's all about. Wrong. A man cannot be a spirit. Being spiritual has absolutely nothing to do with John chapter 14, verse 26. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will be the Spirit of God himself, which Jermaine is not. Jesus said the Spirit will be received, be with, bring to remembrance all things Christ has said to his believers, and dwell simultaneously within each of his followers that believe. All these things Jermaine would have to do, simultaneously. It is logically impossible for Jermaine to be in more than one place, and to dwell inside any of his followers. And since Jesus promised his gift to his followers, who were still with him, alive at the time, Jermaine would literally have to time travel back into the past to not leave them comfortless also. Nowhere throughout the scriptures did you ever feel or did you ever hear the Spirit of God being referred to as Comforter. When you go back into the Old Testament, it was always the Spirit. The Spirit. The Spirit of God. The Spirit. When you get into the New Testament, you hear Jesus Christ put a label, put a title on that Spirit. He called it the Comforter. Now the question is why? Why did Jesus Christ do that? Why did he, cha why did he change the word and add a word? I think this is pretty explanatory. Lamentations here. Let's move on. In the same way Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the same way Jesus Christ is the Spirit and the Holy Spirit, He was still manifested in the flesh. He still was seen and walked among the people. He still was handled. Matter of fact, He told one of His disciples, Handle me, touch me, for a spirit have not flesh and blood. Meaning he has risen from the dead. His disciples were astonished at his resurrection. He wanted them to touch him to prove that he was alive and well and not a spirit. In other words, he was saying in plain English that he was not dead. Did everybody understand that? Everybody got that, right? Okay, so now. Read on. That he may abide with you forever. Okay, I'm going to get back to that in a minute. Read on. Verse 17. Come on. Even the spirit of truth. Read on. Whom the world cannot receive. Okay, now. Yeah, you can pretty much see that he never gets back to that point. It's a good thing, too, because I don't know how he would be able to explain that. Jesus Christ said he shall pray to Father and he shall give you another comforter. Which means that there was a comforter prior to this other comforter coming. Now the comforter is the Holy Spirit. We just read that in St. John chapter 14, verse 26. Everybody understand that, right? Who was the first comforter? And it bet not have been a man. No, the only comforter that could not be a man is the comforter Jesus said would come due to supernatural abilities which supersede any human being attempting to fulfill. He just pulled the most clever wordplay I have ever seen with my own two eyes. That comforter was none other than Jesus. The present comforter at the time, which I have already proven countless times throughout the first video. Now he is agreeing that the comforter is the Holy Spirit, but in past tense. This is where he just fooled an entire audience. 
John chapter 14, 26 speaks of the comforter coming. Anyone decent in grammar can see that the verse is being used in future tense, saying things like, he shall teach you all things, etc., etc. Jesus even said, if I do not depart from you, the comforter cannot come. Clearly meaning the comforter or Holy Spirit was waiting for Jesus to leave so he can come as Christ promised. Who was the first comforter? Let's not, you know. Again, Jesus was the first comforter of the New Testament. Let's read it. Read it. Comfort ye. Comfort ye. Read it one more time. Comfort ye. Read it again. Comfort ye. Read it one more time. Comfort ye. Read it again. Comfort ye. Read it one more time. Comfort ye. Read it again. Comfort ye. Stop. John the Baptist quotes the exact point of where the prophecy of his life begins. I had already pointed out that the first two verses were spoken and commanded to the prophets of that day to comfort Israel at the close of their captivity. Why? Because of the coming of the Messiah. This is what verse 3 and on is talking about. The prophets were the comforters, bringing the prophecy of a coming messenger who will pave the way for the Messiah. This is a story that has never been changed or purposely altered by man until now. You being a man, especially a black man, say that you're the Holy Spirit of God. First of all, a man is the Holy Spirit. I am the Holy Spirit. I am the comforter that God has sent. That man is not the Spirit of God. Say that you're the Holy Spirit of God. That man is not the spirit he contradicts of God. Himself. A man is the Holy Spirit. With that being said, let's begin. John the Baptist. Now the Bible clearly shows that prophets, Jesus, and John the Baptist himself all said the same of his identity and what he was called, and he never changed the story. It's clear that these three verses show that John the Baptist was called the voice. Let's move on. It's clear once again that John the Baptist is called the messenger. Let's move further to some other verses. But you know, before we do that, Let's look up the meaning of the word messenger. I found that to be interesting. We have Hebrew word number 4397. It basically is a word that is pronounced malak from an unused root meaning to dispatch as a deputy, a messenger, specifically of God, that is an angel, also a prophet, priest or teacher, ambassador, angel, king, messenger. Let's move on. John the Baptist is called a prophet, a prophet of the highest. John the Baptist is called master. More than a prophet, sustaining a character more elevated and sacred than the most distinguished of the ancient prophets. Those have been regarded as the most eminent of the prophets who have most clearly predicted the Messiah. Isaiah had been distinguished above all others of the sublimity of his writings and the clearness with which he has foretold the coming of Christ. Yet John surpassed even him. He lived in the time of the Messiah himself. He predicted his coming with still more clarity. He was the instrument of introducing him to the nation. He was therefore first among the prophets. First, meaning greatest, chief of the prophets, surpassing Isaiah himself. I thought this verse was interesting. Um, only the lowest beings in heaven are greater than John, coming from the words of Jesus. This will classify him as a prophet of the highest. 
So, John the Baptist was called the Baptist, the prophet, the messenger, the voice, master, even the prophet of the highest. Never was he called John the Comforter. This title alone would contradict the entire mission prophesied of him. Never a comforter. In the Old Testament, a comforter restored the spirit of Israel. The New Testament speaks of a comforter having roles, functions, and abilities described by Jesus and by the gospel writer Matthew, who spoke of the Holy Spirit being active long before John or Jesus were both adults. So how could John the Baptist be the first comforter if he was being comforted in the womb? The Holy Spirit was already at work to a small degree and will become fully active as the comforter Jesus spoke about after Jesus made his ascension. Acts chapter 13 verse 24. When John first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you this word of his salvation is sent. This in no way sounds like an Old Testament comforter, or the comforter Jesus described, which no mortal man could possibly do or perform, because John the Baptist was not a comforter at all. The accounts of Acts speak of the gospel being now available to the Gentiles, a subject for another video series and time. I will now show you my final account of John the Baptist, and from there I will move to my final point being the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. This is Luke chapter 3 verses 3 through 20, and I'm basically going to just leave it here for you to read. The verses do not depict a comforter at all, but match the descriptions of what the Bible says John the Baptist is, and nothing else. I will now move on to the Holy Spirit. 